The calendar says June, but the forecast calls for snow in the Pacific Northwest. There's a big dip in the jet stream coming in, and that means cold air filters in, which means snow. Well, we could see that in the higher elevations. We're not talking a ton of snow, but certainly for the second week of June, well, you're going to be looking at some snow. In some cases, we could have several inches. Now, along the Pacific Northwest with this system coming in, we are going to get a lot of rain. So here's what we're looking for the rain snow forecast through the weekend in places like Mount Bachelor, we could get 8 to 12 inches. Pretty impressive. Well, what is that showing up in the Northeast? Could that actually be sunshine and a dry day? How about it, right? We've had a very wet and gloomy May and start of June. There in New York, people enjoying the outdoor weather. It gets even better because we are looking at mild conditions turning to hot conditions into next week, and we're talking even record heat. So the heat is going to build from the Midwest to the Northeast. Today it's pretty nice. Minneapolis, Chicago in the 80s and nice up and down the East Coast too. 86 by the way in Caribou, Maine. That is pretty warm for Maine. Saturday, the beat goes on, it gets even hotter. Now as we get into the beginning of next week, Monday, here's where we could see a lot of record breakers. Notice all the 90s that stretch from the Great Lakes all the way off to the Northeast. So here's where the heat wave could start. DC Here's what you're looking at right through much of next week. And boy, is it going to be hot with some record breaking temperatures. Murata, but the record breaking heat in the Midwest and northern U.S. How long will it stick around? CNN meteorologist Chad Myers with the forecast. Hey, Chad. <laughs> John, at least 15 new record highs today forecast by weather service offices across the country. That doesn't typically happen. You don't forecast record highs across the country because it doesn't happen all that much. But this forecast is brought to you by Zizol, the allergy medicine for continuous 24-hour allergy relief. And the pollen is flying, and so is the humidity. The highs today will be in the middle 90s after starting out in the 70s and 80s in some spots. We will reach a record high in New York of 95, the old record, 93. We will break that easily later on this afternoon. Now, how long does it last? Well, we do get a little break on Wednesday and Thursday for the extreme Northeast and New England, but the rest of the country stays oppressively hot. Look at that, 96 in St. Louis on Tuesday. That is 13 degrees warmer than it will be in Orlando. Allison. Wow, that's intense. All right, I've worn a dress to match. And the oppressive. Oppressive. <laughs> but you could have gone with hot, but no, you went with the uh, You know, this is cable. I think we're trying to move away from that in cable news. <laughs> so. Fair enough. <laughs>
When gale force winds picked up last night, fires flared up. Buffels Bay was once again under threat, where 150 people from here and Fairview were evacuated. Thick smoke blocking off the N2. Hey, maybe two hours and a half. The working on fire helicopter flew in to fill up at Lake Pleasant and airdrop water on raging flames. A short while later, military helicopters arrived as backup. Trucks used to transport produce used their tanks to fill up with water. In Sedgefield, residents took another route. Men and women arrived with axes and power saws to hack down trees to build a fire break around the town. We're clearing the bushes. Um, uh, I think they're making a fire break. We're going to bring the grader through here just now to uh, make, it, make the sand loose to stop the fire jumping over these trees here. We've already done right the way around those houses there. So we've cut all the big pine trees and, uh, but yeah. Shocking, shocking. We've never experienced anything like this before. It's just totally, totally unexpected. Now you can see it coming your way, which is very frightening. This is incredible, man. But the whole garden route, man, you can't, you can't single out Sagefield. Eh? Right down, everyone's been fantastic. Eh? There were also reports of fires in George, but disaster management has confirmed that they're all under control. An inferno that left a trail of destruction. 1,000 firefighters are deployed in Nisna and surrounding areas to fight the blaze. But strong winds are still complicating their efforts. The wind is starting to gain more momentum outside there. We've got a lot of ground crews there, so we are, con we are trying to contain that side of, of the fire. Um, at this stage, Sedgefield town is not under threat, so there's no need for panic at Sedgefield. Precautionary evacuations were done at Buffalo Bay. Water remains scarce. Following previous water restrictions and damage to the infrastructure, residents have been urged to only use 400 litres per day. You know, before the fires, we were uh, at level 3 water restrictions. But because of the uh, fire now, that has totally changed the situation. So we are actually asking people to, to um, limit themselves to about 400 litres of water per day because our water consumption has um, drastically uh, increased. Thousands of evacuees are still being accommodated at various community halls, schools and churches. They can only return home once the fires have been extinguished. Tanya Krauser, SABC News, Naisna. The death toll from the fires along the Garden Route has risen to seven, with one more death in the Naisna area and one in the Nelson Mandela Bay area. A 63-year-old truck driver died while trying to flee a blaze in, Vin in Vinherville at Concordia near Naisna. Outside Port Elizabeth, an elderly woman died at her small holding in the Thornhill area. She was found burnt near her gate while her husband is currently in hospital. Now, firefighters in the Nelson Mandela Metropolitan Municipality are working around the clock as they attempt to get the raging fell fires in the area under control. Now, the out-of-control wildfires swept through the area, destroying homes, property and a school. This was the school firefighters fought so hard to save. Early on in the day, the school and surrounding areas were evacuated as the fire came dangerously close. Firefighters thought they had averted a disaster. Only for the wind to pick up to gale force strength, igniting smouldering embers. The fire raced through the school grounds, destroying everything in its path. The N2 linking Port Elizabeth and Humansdorp was closed to traffic a number of times during the day as thick smoke reduced visibility. High winds resulted in the flames jumping the road in many places, making firefighting efforts difficult. The fire was also burning furiously in inaccessible areas. Electricity supply to various parts of Utenag, Dispatch and Port Elizabeth were disrupted as the fire burnt down supply poles. Firefighters have been working through the night to contain the fire and limit the threat to property. Janine Lee, SABC News, Port Elizabeth.
This camp provides food and water for hundreds of people forced to flee from their homes. It's in the Warda region of southeastern Ethiopia, one of the hardest hit areas. The drought has badly affected our livelihood and the environment. Our livestock, on which our lives depend, have died because there is no pasture that they can feed on. This is the fourth consecutive drought in the last few years. 7.8 million Ethiopians rely on food aid to survive. The UN says that figure is expected to rise by a further 2 million by next month. Aid groups and the government are calling for help but are worried about donor fatigue. The basic food ration is just not coming in here in sufficient amounts and now we're looking at the food pipeline actually breaking. So the food is running out in about a month's time. After that, we don't know what's going to happen. And without that basic food, then you have the problem of falling into severe malnutrition because people aren't getting any food. These children uh, become severely malnourished and that's where you have a very dangerous situation. Meteorologists blame fluctuations in ocean temperatures for successive failed rains. It's resulted in a series of severe back-to-back -back droughts in Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa region. I have never seen anything like this in my life. If we didn't get support here, we would have died like our livestock. We thank the humanitarian agencies and the government for saving our lives. International donors have pledged $1.8 billion in aid to Ethiopia for the first six months of this year. The UN says so far only half of that money has been donated. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera.
Ayan na yung salimbay. Nay, nay. It has been quite a weekend. Altogether, there are 30 wildfires burning across Arizona right now. And while some of those are prescribed burns, the Department of Forestry says they're worried this is a sign that fire season will be very active. The state and our federal cooperators have responded to nearly 900 wildfires since January 1st, and right now we're outpacing the number from last year. The fire activity is high. We knew today was going to be pretty active with the temperature, with the windy conditions. Um, we have red flag warnings in place pretty much throughout most of the state, so we knew it was going to be busy. Um, we just didn't really expect it to be as busy as it was today. We're trying to use all of the resources. We have a lot of aircraft that we're using. Um, the T fire, for example, off of Black Canyon City fire. So we mobilized a lot of air resources to, to try and get that fire stopped. If you're camping and you're using a campfire in a developed site, make sure your campfire is completely out. It's cold to the touch before you walk away. Um, never drag chains, never pull over into tall grasses because the underneath of your car gets very hot. A lot of the fires will continue to burn. Um, I can't predict what's going to happen within the next few days, within the next week. We do know activity has increased. Um, it's going to continue, but fortunately we have a lot of resources across the state. Uh, we have resources across the nation as well that have come to Arizona to support us. Next Arrow continues our team coverage now. Max, what are these evacuees telling you? Well, one woman I spoke with, Kevin, said the, it was an ex, a frightening experience as homes in Kochi Stronghold and homes south of Dragoon Road are under evacuation as this lizard fire continues to grow. Now, take a look at this video. Karen Weilacker took this as she was evacuated from her home in Kochi Stronghold. She's a longtime cabin owner since 1986 and says she's never experienced anything like this. Smoke getting more and more intense in her area. She described the stronghold as a small and close community, only about 20 five people or so live there. She said she's concerned about the community and the well-being of the residents, but says things can be replaced. Homes, all of that can be replaced. However, she says she's very concerned about the nature and the animals, which aren't so easily replaced. Weilacker says she's prepared for the worst, but hoping for the best. Well, it's frightening. I mean, it is a frightening experience that, um, you know, all that you hold dear could possibly go up in flames, but at the same time, I have great confidence that it won't. Fires continue to burn across Arizona this morning. In Cochise County, the Lizard Fires burned 15,000 acres in the Dragoon Mountains between Benson and Wilcox. Now, nine on your side, Carlos Herrera is live once again with the very latest on the battle and the efforts to contain it as the sun starts to come up. I'm sure you're seeing smoke back there, Carlos. Yeah, more smoke and ashes in this area. Now, good news overnight, as crews say, the wind didn't cause as much trouble as they expected. But over the weekend, that wasn't the case. Take a look what happened, was left behind, actually, in this area. We were just off Dragoon Road near Highway 191. A lot of ashes and char on the ground, a lot of debris in this area. Now, fire officials say fire activity actually slowed during the night because of increased humidity. However, there are still places just northeast of the Dragoon Mountains where the fire remained active throughout the night. This morning, officials, though, are pretty optimistic. They're hoping to call the fire at least 15 percent contained. Now, officials say crews working overnight focus their efforts on the northeast corner of the fire where it's threatening structures and the west flank of the fire in the area of Fort Canyon to prevent it from spreading even further west. This morning, officials say more than 200 firefighters on the ground and three helicopters will be assigned 
line to the fire. The strategy will be similar as long as the wind allows it, of course. Now, the Cochise County Sheriff's Office says evacuations for homes south of Dragoon Road are still um, under evacuations. Now, homes north of Dragoon Road and homes in the Dragoon Mountain area are still under pre-evacuation orders. And fire officials uh, and the Cochise County Sheriff's Office are being really proactive in making sure they keep uh, people who live in this area informed and prepared just in case the fire spreads to that area. Now we'll have more updated information for you guys at 6 a.m. Uh, when uh, the fire officials have scheduled a uh, media briefing at uh, Cochise County or Cochise Elementary School. For now, that is the very latest here near Dragoon. Pat Sam, we're sending it back to you guys. Covering Colorado for you, a wildfire is getting worse in the northwest corner of our state. Right here, we have infrared video of an air tanker attacking the Hunter fire. The fire is about 20 miles southwest of Meeker. That is one of three fires in that region right now. Our Matt Crochel, as always, covering western Colorado for us tonight. Matt, more crews are starting to arrive in that region. And we're seeing just a long line of them come through downtown Meeker as that heavy, thick smoke kind of settles in the valley and the winds, they continue. You can see some branches down here, 40, 50 mile an hour wind gusts, and it is not helping firefighters one bit. About southwest here, about 20 miles from uh, this area here in Meeker, the Hunter fire is burning. It's about 1,000 acres right now, and it's a real concern for firefighters because there's a lot of oil and natural gas uh, installations and pipe lines in the area that they are threatening right now. Those flames are very close. Uh, firefighters also responding from across the West, a lot of them aircraft and those aircraft are actually grounded right now. We just caught up with a crew that flew in from Wyoming and they say it was a wild ride. Uh, we were moving around a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is pretty bad up there. Um, it's kind of like, you ever been in a rodeo riding a bull? That's, how, that's what it feels like. Like riding a bull, that's exactly what he described. And you can see the wind out here. It's really, really difficult for firefighters to control and see where these flames are going to go. These fires are exploding. About 45 minutes drive from here in Rangeley, just north of Rangeley, another wildfire is burning. That one has exploded to about 2,000 acres at last check. There are evacuations on that fire. And I just got an alert from the Rio Blanco County Sheriff who said they are preparing to evacuate portions of the community of Dinosaur. Those people have been put on pre-evacuation status. So these wildfires are being fueled by these warm winds here in western Colorado, and it is going to be a long night as they begin to set up their camp right here in Meeker. We're live, Matt Crochel, CBS4 Mountain Newsroom. В Сибири в области непогоды сразу в пяти регионах – Алтайском и Красноярском краях, Республики Алтай, Омской и Кемеровской областях. В ближайшее время ожидается ураган, ливень и град. Об этом сообщила МЧС. Омск сегодня уже пережил одну грозу с градом, которая парализовала город. Он буквально завален поломанными деревьями, оборванной линией электропередачи, и автомобили ушли под воду. Очевидцы пишут в интернете о своих историях. Например, как вода наполовину затопила автобус прямо с пассажирами. Наш корреспондент 
Анастасия Ефимова изучила кадры из пострадавшего Омска. Я не знаю, это Питер или еще какая-то страна. В принципе, бульвар архитекторов 4. Вроде в Сибири живем, где холодно. Какими-то сильными такими потопами мы никогда не славили. Сначала шутили тропический ливень. Впрочем, очень скоро о мечам стало совсем не до шуток. Мамочка, у меня сейчас на машине тут вода будет. Ужас. Ой, как страшно. Самые рисковые продолжали движение. Водители поосторожнее, экстренно искали возвышенность, чтобы припарковаться, пока не добралась большая вода. Грязные потоки которой заливали не только легковые автомобили, но даже автобус, превратив его то ли в тонущий «Титаник», то ли просто в машину-амфибию. А если ему туда зальется, то как он будет там управлять? Да? Ну все. Так, видимо, на работу я приехала. Заливала не только проезжую часть и тротуары. Пострадали пешеходные переходы, подъезды жилых домов, фотостудия. Вода добралась до склада техники одного из городских гипермаркетов электроники и полностью блокировала входы в магазины на цокольных этажах. Машина затопила в городе Омск. Там еще магазин снизу, он тоже затоплен. В одном из районов молния попала прямо в недостроенную многоэтажку. Порывы штормового ветра обрывали провода, ломали деревья, сносили непрочные конструкции. Забор с дороги на проводах повис. О том, что на город надвигается стихия, в МЧС предупредили заблаговременно. Пугали не только ливнем, но и градом. И, как выяснилось, не зря. Кстати, предупрежденные горожане к защите собственного имущества подошли с юмором. Вот в этом дворе автомобили заранее накрыли одеялами, чтобы кузов не пострадал. Те, кто сделать этого не успел, не сдавались. Обороняли машину от непогоды, не жалея сил. Впрочем, этому мужчине, видимо, все-таки придется воспользоваться советом соседей и найти для машины более надежное укрытие. Ведь непогода в Омске, похоже, задержится. Метеорологи объявляют новое штормовое предупреждение, обещают грозу, ливень и снова град. Горожан просят держаться подальше от линии электропередач, рекламных счетов, деревьев. А лучше всего просто оставаться дома. Анастасия Ефимова, Вести. Набирает. В такой степени силы набирает, унесется. Мамочки, боже, боже, я ее 